everybody. Um, let me just make sure everything's open here. Um, do I need to, can I? I can close that, perfect. Alrighty then. So let's talk about what to expect for the open writing class. Uh, for those that will be joining us, uh, we have, we will be, let me actually turn this on. This should be it. All right, hopefully you can see the screen. I, oh, I don't even know what I'm sharing anymore. Yeah, I can see what to expect in open writing. Perfect, thank you very much. No problem. All right. So what to expect in the open writing class. The first thing that we usually will cover is um, <clears throat> the absolute basics, going from the bottom and working way all the way up. And if we're already familiar with the absolute basics from what, uh, the, what a sentence is and what a, a paragraph is, then we work our way above. Uh, we have to figure out first, why is it that we write? Because there's more than just one reason because we're told to. Uh, and then we discuss what a sentence is, what the shortest possible sentence is, what the longest possible sentence is, because uh, there is a right and wrong answer to that. And also depending on the type of writing that you're doing. So if you're doing academic formal writing, there is a minimum length expected of a paragraph. And if you're doing uh, informal writing, there is still a minimum length expected of a paragraph. So we would be just, uh, discussing things like that. Uh, then we would talk about the various styles of writing that you will work with. You have your types, which uh, I give you 10 examples here, as you can see on the screen. Hopefully that's uh, big enough. I'll zoom in just a little bit. <clears throat> Uh, but your types of writing versus your styles of writing, those are going to be different. And we cover in depth um, expository, descriptive, persuasive, also known as argumentative or the other way around. Um, uh, basically, when we do persuasive argumentative writing, um, I teach you how to argue. Uh, so that way, the next time your parents say, don't argue with me, well, uh, you'll be able to argue back, but politely, of course, we still have to show them respect. There is a respectful way to argue with anyone uh, and not to be confused with fighting. Fighting is wrong, being difficult is wrong, but um, intellectually challenging someone is definitely what we will do. And then we get to the best and most fun part, my favorite part, the thing that we're going to be practicing together today is doing narrative writing. Narrative writing, of course, is uh, storytelling. It's the way we present a series of events to somebody, and we want that somebody to have a very clear picture in their head uh, if someone were to turn your story into a movie, you want to make sure that everything that they include or that they have, um, I mean, everything that you've written is in the movie. Uh, so a lot of people will read a novel or read a book and then they re, uh, they watch the movie and it's, so well, what happened? Why did you guys make this stuff up? Uh, or didn't add this detail or that detail? Possibly because the writing was, uh, was either too vague or wasn't um, specific enough. And we go over various things like that. Uh, so while we are doing short stories, excuse me, uh, we will focus on uh, various uh, different things like the short story plot line, Freytag's Pyramid. Uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with this uh, diagram. So if I show you uh, this guy over here with the fun little um, exposition, the rising action that occurs, this whole sort of graph that you would see in math, why would we mix math and English together? Well, just to show you the idea of certain things happening within a short story. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, just a show of hands, I guess, how many of you are already doing short stories or short story writing in your uh, classes, you, something that you're already familiar with short story writing, see a bunch of hands, very good, very good. Um, and uh, if I could open this up some more, 
Um, there we go, that should work. And of you that are doing short story writing or have not yet started, I guess, anyone, uh, how many of you enjoy short story writing or really enjoy getting your writing out? I see lots of enthusiastic hands. Very good. Uh, so when we do short story writing or any kind of writing, we need to know still raising hands. Awesome. Very good. Uh, I'm always excited to see people excited about writing. Um, I lost my thought. What was I saying? I was saying, it's in there. Oh, right. Uh, so we have to make sure that when we do our writing or versions of our writing that we know the voice that we want to use, the voice that we should be using, because uh, those are going to be two different things. The voice that we should be using is usually going to be a formal voice. Uh, unless it's unless the piece of writing that you're doing is going to be a narrative or something that's going to be informal. So when I say a formal voice, how many are already familiar with formal versus informal writing? Yeah, got hands coming up already. Perfect. Uh, and when we do formal writing, uh, eh, a little bit boring because of the way that we have to speak or what is expected of us while we talk, but it's a very useful skill to learn. Uh, when we do informal writing, then that's just uh, essentially the way we usually would speak, the way we talk. And my goal is always to try and improve the way we write, so that way the way we speak, and the way we write eventually uh, seem rather similar. Uh, the way I write is almost very similar to the way I speak aloud. Uh, and uh, it's a very helpful tool when you get into essay writing, if you're ever trying to brainstorm ideas, um, good stuff. We, so the bulk of our classes are gonna be focusing on expository, descriptive, persuasive, and narrative writing styles. Uh, and provided that everyone gets their homework done on time, we will breeze right through it. Like I don't expect, um, Lulu, it's 14 weeks again? Uh, the new session will be 12, 12 weeks. Okay. Yeah, except awesome. for the March break. So totally 12 classes. All right. So I don't expect the classes to go, uh, each section to go for too long. My main goal is to get us up to narrative writing and as close to it as possible. Um, which means if we get through the expository part, which is the most boring of it all, it's just tell me about something or uh, someone, and I don't want to know how you feel about that because expository writing typically does not include opinions or expressions of your feelings and whatnot. It's just a boring textbook piece of information, uh, something to be like, well, um, the Titanic was built uh, at this point in time and it crashed here and sank there. The fact that the Titanic was an amazing and beautiful ship is irrelevant to the exposition or the expository portion of your writing. But when you get into your descriptive portion of writing, that's a little bit more fun because now you can paint a very vivid image in someone's mind. If you wanted to tell me exactly what Harry Potter looks like, well, you would have to describe everything from his hair to his eyes to the scar on his forehead. Where on his forehead would it be? Uh, if you watch the movies, you'll notice the scar changes places. Also, um, Harry's eyes change color. Uh, if Ron Weasley wasn't a ginger in the film, then the book did a bad job of explaining that Ron Weasley and all Weasleys were gingers. Um, so descriptive writing is going to be rather important in that case. But then again, we still don't use descriptive writing or even expository writing to convince anyone of anything. That's what happens when we get to persuasive writing. That's when we're trying to convince somebody that, excuse me, that our point of view, our feelings are worth their consideration. And then of course, once we have excelled at these, uh, the expository, descriptive, and persuasive, then we can get to the narrative because narrative is going to use all of this. We are going to try 
and explain details about the setting. Once upon a time, there was, and uh, if you're choosing, no matter what short story you're doing, and we're going to take a brief look at the three little pigs so that way we get an idea of what we have, uh, of what we are expecting uh, in a short story. And then together, uh, we are going to create a short story by the end of this class, hopefully. Um, and I will lend my narrative voice so that way we have uh, a story come out a little faster. Um, but all of you hopefully will be providing all the ideas that we need to write the short story so that way I don't have to think of them. Uh, but I can and I will. Uh, but I think my stories are a little boring. They're more for uh, geared towards people my age or actually no, even people my age think I'm boring for older uh, those much older than me think my stories are better. Um, so maybe I'm just boring. I don't know. Who knows? Um, other things to talk about. Yeah, and hopefully the goal will be doing some journal entries, a little bit of a textbook sort of thing where I'll be giving you an article most likely about sloths because I think sloths are very cool. Uh, they're very, very slow and very funny to look at, also adorable, but uh, there's a lot of neat and interesting facts about sloths that we will cover just for the textbook portion. Uh, letter writing, letter writing is a lost art. Uh, I will hopefully teach most of you how to do this. And a lot of you may be practicing letter writing when sending me an email. And there is etiquette, expectations that you must meet in order to send an email properly. Um, you awake, Ryan? You look like you're sleepy. <laughs> yes, Ryan. Okay. Um, we'll do a bit of a little bit of speech writing, possibly depending on how far we go. If we get to a bit of speech writing, that's always fun. Um, I don't think we'll be doing recipes, but recipes are a type of expository and descriptive writing because you have to be able to tell someone how to do something. Uh, without really including your life story and the feelings about this recipe. Uh, of course, short stories are not the only type of stories that you can do, but that's what we will be doing. Uh, and the first session is supposed to be preparing you so that way when we begin uh, the next session, if you enjoy the first, um, we go through things like character development, to, uh, well, more in depth, we do that anyways. Uh, but we have to decide aspects and uh, various characteristics that we're going to get with our characters. We don't want just some, we don't want someone that's going to be boring. We, even as a writer, you want to know everything about the person you're writing about. Whether or not your reader, your audience knows everything, well, sometimes they do very good detective work because you already know about your character. Um, like, for example, if your character walks with a limp, but they have a cane to help them with that, but you never mention that they have a cane. I mean, sorry, the other way, that you never mention that they have a limp. Someone that does close reading and your reading, if it's very descriptive in the narration uh, and detail of the character, someone can figure out, oh, this person must be old, they, must, they have a cane, they walk a little funny, that, that's why they have a cane. Um, little details like that. Um, news articles, probably not. Biographies will probably do that uh, when we do expository writing. Plays, some of you, your writing style may be done entirely in second person. Who's familiar with points of view, first, second, and third person, show of hands. All right, Zoe, first to go, awesome. More people per, oh, look at you all go. Awesome, so proud. Um, very good, I keep seeing the hands popping up. That's very good, I'm very happy to see that. Uh, and then uh, hopefully, I like to, hopefully we can get to some poetry. Poetry is a lot of fun. Um, I was one of those students in grade school that hated poetry, but that's because the poems that were given to me all were boring. And I refuse to give you boring poems when we work on them. And most of the time I will focus on things like limericks. Limericks are uh, like essentially song lyrics. Um, okay, that's fair, Tessa, that's fair. Um, 
how do I move that? Okay, cool. Um, and as a side note as well, usually what happens when we do our um, meetings is I do everything through Google rather than Zoom. I'm not very familiar with Zoom. Uh, I still see hands raising. Jennifer, did you have a question? Or you're just agreeing with me? Okay, that's fine. Uh, anything else to focus on before we do some writing of oh, our own? I, sorry for interrupt, Mr. Ross. I saw yes. Dan. Dan, why she or he raised the hand now? Okay. Dan, uh, this... why? You have any question? Uh, no. Oh no. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not a hundred percent sure on how to see all the messages popping up because uh, I'm a bit of a dinosaur with technology. Um, but yes, uh, thank you, Lulu. Oh, no. um, all right. So if we are going to write a short story together in the time that we have left, let me have some water. Um, and if at any point we are teaching, I mean, if, uh, <laughs> if at any point during a lesson, you haven't been drinking water or I haven't been drinking water. We all need to remind each other, especially I need to remind myself because it's very important if you're doing a lot of talking, if you're learning, your brain needs fuel. Water helps fuel get to your brain. So make sure you're always drinking water. Uh, Okie dokie, let's talk a little bit about the three little pigs. Uh, when we are writing a short story, there are various plot line elements that we require and various other things that we require for um, a plot line to, uh, like, to develop the plot line. Excuse me. Uh, do I have another picture here? This is all character development. Nope. Okay, so I shall use this one. When we start our short story, there are important things that we need to know about. We need to know where the story is taking place, when, um, maybe even why, the point in time, the periods, uh, uh, various things that are necessary to know in order for us as an audience, the reader, to place ourselves within the short story. And we also need to know who we are following. Who is it that the short story um, is going to be about, or who is it that we are going to watch in our short story. So if we look at the three little pigs and the exposition or the introduction or the exposition, I don't think there's another word. Is, does any, is anyone else familiar with another word for introduction or exposition, the beginning of your short story? Well, I guess begin. Start. The start, yep, cool. We'll call it a start as well. Uh, anybody else? I gotta turn my sound up. I can barely hear all of you. Uh, beginning? Yes, we got the beginning. <clears throat> okay, so uh, in the exposition, the beginning, the start, the opening, opening, there is another one. Uh, we learn in The Three Little Pigs, when we read about The Three Little Pigs, or if you have other short stories that you really enjoy, and I use fairy tales because they are usually the most widely known. Um, there are plenty. There's like The Miser and His Gold, The Three Billy Goats Gruff, Cinderella, um, which is a Disney fairy tale. You've got Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, uh, Thumbelina, Jack and the Beanstalk, um, I could go on and on and on. Uh, the elf, uh, the elves and the shoemaker, or the shoemaker and the, the elves and the shoemaker, um, Aladdin, uh, 1001 Nights. Like I could just list a bunch of short stories. And then I could list my favorite short stories by Edgar Allan Poe. So The Fall of the House of Usher, The Telltale Heart, The Raven, The Pendulum. Uh, you get my point. Okay. Um, where, yeah, <laughs> we get the exposition, the introduction. We need to know who we're looking at. We see that we're looking at three little pigs or three little whatevers. They don't have to be pigs, but um, I guess pigs were the uh, animal of choice. It could be three little bunnies. It could be uh, three little werewolves. And then it could be a big bad pig instead of the big bad wolf. Um, but the important thing is we have our characters. So the three little pigs. 
and I guess their parents, their mom and their dad, or uh, the book that I have only has their mom. So who knows? Um, and then eventually we're going to find out about the big bad wolf. But we only need to know who we're starting with. If the story changes points of view or changes people as we go, that's completely fine. Uh, how we're doing on time? We're doing well. Okay. We find out the setting of our story in the beginning of The Three Little Pigs as well. We find out that we are living with the three little pigs at their mom and dad's place and that they live perhaps in a town or in a small a cottage in a forest. Uh, they could live anywhere. They could live on a moon in space and then go and build their houses on other little moons or asteroids. Uh, it could be a space adventure. Um, make it a little bit like Star Wars or Star Trek, depending on what you prefer. Um, I prefer both. I couldn't choose. They're both great. Uh, in case you were wondering, after we get the introduction, the exposition, the beginning, the start, there are other things that we have to get to. We need a reason for the pigs to go on their adventure, for them to leave. Uh, this is slightly different than the um, conflict or the problem, uh, but as you see here, it's called. We call it. We can call it the initiating event, but I don't quite like that term. I prefer call to action. And I use this term, it means something different depending on the style of story that you are learning. If you're learning a Greek tra a tragedy, that's going to be a different thing. But I call, I use call to action because uh, it's the easiest to relate to. When you get a phone call, hey, come on. Well, nowadays, I guess during the pandemic, doesn't quite work this way. But before it, you would get a phone call. Hey, do you want to come on over? Do you want to play some video games? Or uh, that's the only thing I can really relate to because I play a lot of video games. Uh, Minecraft, if anyone else plays Minecraft, that's a lot of fun, right? Um, it's my favorite game. <clears throat> hmm? It's my favorite game. It's your favorite game. Awesome. Yeah, we'll have... my favorite game, too. Very that good. I only like to play PvP, though, which is really Okay. Fun. Yeah, I do a lot of PvP games as well. Uh, okay, uh, but let's not get too distracted by video games. I could talk about that for days. But that's the call to action. So your friend calls you up, hey, let's uh, build a new world in Minecraft, or let's get on Fortnite, or Warzone, or whatever other games that you guys play, uh, Dark Souls, um, I don't know, um, Overwatch. Uh, so that's the call to action, the reason why the characters leave. In The Three Little Pigs, the call to action or the initiating event is that the pigs want to leave their home and have their own houses of their own. Excuse me. And this is the initial event, the inciting, inciting, inciting. Um, there's a word. I'm, it's probably event. Uh, but the reason that the characters go on the adventure, we need that reason. They have to leave for some reason other than I feel like going to build a house. It's not very interesting. We need more than that. So when you start Minecraft, your inciting event is if you don't eat and build a house, you're going to die, uh, <laughs> which is pretty bleak, but that's not the same thing in the story here with the um, three little pigs. They want their own houses. That's where the rising action comes into play. That's where 90% of your story is going to happen. I, you know what, let's say 80% of your story is gonna happen. Things have to build up for us to get to the climax. We need a series of events to stack on top of each other. Otherwise, we're just gonna have this boring sort of, okay, they move out, they build their houses, the end. Is that really worth reading? Do you want to read a story where everything goes right? It's like, okay, I'm going to go to school. I've went to school. I got straight A's. Now I'm going to get a job. The end. Boring. What happened? Did you have any tough tests? Did you meet any friends? Like, if you're going to tell me a story, I expect to hear some good things happening other than... We need a problem. Exactly. We need some kind of problem because we, as readers... We need something to go down. Otherwise, what's the point? I don't want a happy story. If it ends happy, that's fine. But if you suffer during, that's great. 
Uh, <laughs> which uh, don't you always have to know the person's characteristics? Yep, we should know the person's characteristics. Now, the way we convey that as writers is going to be a little bit different than the way uh, the or audience, the reader, is going to figure these clues out. So, uh, who who pointed that out? I don't know who spoke to me just now. A name, perhaps. Is it a Cheng Si? Who said? Like, I, I didn't pay attention to. Uh, me. I me, can you see your name? Uh, Dan. Oh, Dan. Dan. Perfect. So Dan. Thank you very much. Dan points out that we need to know some characteristics. And in the case of the three little pigs, yes, you must know some characteristics about these pigs. We need to know that one of the pigs is exceptionally lazy. They don't do their homework. They don't even fold their laundry. They just toss it all into one spot and they just leave it. They don't clean the room. They probably smell because they don't bathe regularly or I guess take mud baths because that's what pigs like to do. Uh, so that's one pig that we learn about, the characteristic about them. Another pig, he's not as lazy, he's a little laid back, but he does put in the effort when he sort of needs to, but when he gets tired, that's it, I'm done, no more for me. And then the last pig, our third pig, our eldest pig, so even their age would be characteristic, so the laziest pig is actually the youngest. And then the middle pig, he's the middle effort kind of guy. And then our oldest pig, he puts in the effort. He's a hard worker. He knows that if you're sweating while doing it, it's worth doing. Anything that's worth doing is going to take some efforts. If it's too easy, it's not worth your time. A lot uh, of details. So a lot of details that we would definitely need to include, yes. Um, and these details, they can be descriptive, they can be a narrative of the events. So rather than the three little pigs were in their home and then the three little pigs were building their houses, how did we get from one to the other? What happened? Um, the details of each event flowing into another, very important stuff. Uh, so we find out about the pigs, we find information out about these pigs, what's going on, um, and how they get to where they're getting, how they begin to build their houses. So our first little pig, the lazy, the young one, he starts building his house and he makes it out of straw, because straw is the easiest thing. And this is one of the facts, one of the events that's going to be put into our rising action that just builds up. Um, and keep in mind, I'm going to be asking you guys for ideas, so get ready to type in the chat. So when we start developing our own quick short story, we shall see how it goes. Uh, so get ready to provide me with some characters, some setting, plot elements, uh, various events that we are going to try and include. We won't include every single one, but I will do my best. Uh, we've got, uh, so the first pig, he builds his house out of straw because he's lazy. The next pig, who puts in a bit more effort, builds his house out of, um, I haven't quite asked yet, but thank you. We'll make a character a monkey. Yes. Out of um, wood. And then the last pig, the oldest pig, he spends the most time building his home. He builds his home out of brick. It's very solid, very sturdy. Then along comes a hungry wolf. This is where the problem enters in. So I don't like how a lot of uh, short story pyramids are going to say that the problem happens right away. Th that's not true. We have a call to action, a reason to start our story, but the problem may not enter until much later. Just like Little Red Riding Hood, the problem is the forest that she's going into. The wolf just so happens to be a part of that problem. So when Little Red Riding Hood goes off to see her grandmother, she doesn't leave because of the problem. She leaves because she's going to visit her grandmother. She wants to go see her grandmother. Or the um, elves and the shoemaker, the shoemaker struggling to make money. So he, he's ha he has to make shoes, but wakes up and then there's always pairs of shoes being made. Um, uh, Harry Potter gets a letter in the mail. That is not the problem. Voldemort is the problem but we don't meet him right away or find out much about him right away. Uh, so that's why I call, I start with the call to action or the inciting event rather than the problem. Um, so the three pigs, they build their houses. Then we get to the climax, which is 
Uh, after the wolf has blown and broken down the first and second house, he gets to the last one. And depending on the version of the short story you're reading, the wolf either ends up down the chimney being boiled alive and eaten by the three pigs, or he just can't blow the house down and leaves. Uh, if you're going for the original, the wolf is going to be eaten by the pigs. Um, if you're going for the fairy tale, the wolf huffs and he puffs and he blows himself out. Uh, just passes out and goes, okay, well, I can't get in here. And the three pigs live happily ever after. But the events that build up to the climax, the ultimate tension, the like, oh, what's going to happen? I don't know. Uh, we get to the climax. Things don't get sorted right away. That's not what happens at the climax is the highest point of the story, because as soon as we have a solution to our problem, things start to fall into place, which gives us the falling action, where now that the characters have something new, they've got a new piece of information, a new superpower, a new ability, someone has something happen to them, they find something, a discovery, something changes out of the norm that's when everything starts to fall into place and things get sorted. Uh, so uh, the pig, pig number one and pig number two, or the, uh, depending on what you call them, so you could call one Porky and one Oink, uh, it's up to you really. They move in with their brother and then they all live happily ever after, the resolution, the end, the denouement, uh, the completion of our story. So uh, we've got a little bit of time left. Perfect. We are going to try and write a short story as quickly as we can. Ah, first of all, any questions, comments, concerns? Um, are you all with me so far? Uh, OK, yes, Kobe, we will have a monkey as uh, a character in our story. Um, OK. Open uh, someone said something? A banana. Uh, okay, we'll have some kind of monkey with a banana. Uh, okay, so uh, the banana is the short story, a short story or a fable. So a fable is a form of short story. Um, we're going to be writing any kind that we can. We're not going to stick to a particular uh, schema or um, schematic in this case or um, specific plot line. We can do some kind of fable, uh, or the character could be a doctor. How about a monkey doctor or a doctor monkey? Combine the two. All right, so one of our characters is going to be a monkey. What shall we call monkey? We'll call him Luffy. So Luffy is a monkey. And he is also a, a, no, a, der, a, a durse doctor. at first. So we'll say he's a doctor, and then we'll have a nurse. Uh, what are we going to name the nurse? Puffy. Puffy? Lily. Poppy? Can't Puffy, quite yeah. hear. Puffy and Luffy. Did someone? Lily. Lily. Puffy and Luffy. Oh, OK. Lily. Puffy, yeah. Uh, if you want to just type in, because I can't hear everybody. Uh, can we have a human in the story? Yeah, sure. And uh, and then we'll add a lily. Okay, uh, lily. So Puffy and Luffy, he is going to be a, uh, so Puffy's going to be a nurse. Um, oh, did you mean Buffy, not Puffy? B Buffy, yeah, Buffy. All right, Buffy's a nurse oh, and- Buffy, Buffy, Luffy, and Puffy. Okay, uh, oh, we're good. We'll stick with uh, Luffy, Buffy, and Lily. And what is Lily going to be? Lily's going to be human. Um, Buffy's going to be a dog then. But they're not going to be on all fours. They're going to be walking. Who's going to be the doctor? Uh, Luffy's going to be the doctor. The monkey is going to be a doctor. Oh. <clears throat> Okay, uh, and you want Lily to be a patient. Lily, uh, patient. Uh, okay, and then we're going, it's going to take place in a hospital. That's fine. Hospital and, oh, that's not how you spell hospital. And we're going to make it 
Okay, the hospital is called the Mighty Jungle. Very cool. Uh, and this hospital is, that's not how you spell jungle. Nope, stop it. There we go. Uh, this hospital is going to, Lily's injured and Luffy comes and rescues Lily. Um, okay, we will have that. Uh, Lily comes injured and is rescued. Hi. I Luffy. Luffy. Oh wait, uh, why not Buffy the dog finds Lily and then Buffy alerts Luffy? Okay. Uh, we will get to that in just a moment. So the hospital, wh where is this going to be? Is this going to be... Um, wait, did you get Luffy from the anime? Uh, yes, that's where I stole the name from. Uh, so they're in a jungle as well. Okay. Uh, so the hospital, the mighty jungle, is located in a jungle. Uh, in a jungle. And... Uh, Lily becomes sick. All right, we're going to say that Lily is also an adventurer. Uh, Lily will be looking for... Um, bananas. 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 Okay. We're going to say Lily's going to be looking for a golden banana, the ultimate banana, and a lost <laughs> temple or tomb or city. Uh, Lily, adventurer, looking for... The lost golden banana. Of, uh, the lost banana of. Um, of Minion. There we go. Uh, we're going to add all these elements. The lost banana of Minion. Um, and so she's going to go to a. Then the golden banana could be poisoned. Ooh, look at that. All right. Uh, the. Golden banana is um, poisonous. Booby traps. Oh, but, eh. with yeah, and she falls in a booby trap and so she's too careless. Uh, with poison. Uh, okay, she's gonna. Lily is going to fall into a pit. Um. Uh, then I with guess lose poisonous her. monkey. With a poisonous monkey. Oh, we've already got a monkey. Someone's obsessed with monkeys. We can do monkeys another time. Uh, mon oh, monkey D. Luffy is our monkey Creepy here. Creepy clowns with a knife. Creepy clowns with knives. Creepy clowns with knives. Okay, that's a little intense. Okay, with a lot of grannies. That's creepy clowns, okay? Grannies. Oh, that's um, a really good point there, Dan. We're going to make Lily claustrophobic as well. Um, <laughs> grannies. What does that mean? That means she is afraid of small spaces. Oh. <laughs> Why? Um, that's not how we spell claustrophobic. Why is she afraid of small fa uh, play uh, spaces? Because it's a phobia. Up. Phobias are not actually rational. I am scared to death of spiders for no particular reason other than they are spiders. Uh, also, no, elevators. Scary. elevators scare me for no good reason. I have a friend, she is scared of watching balloons rise into the sky. So uh, phobias are just completely irrational. There is no reason at all. Uh, yeah. Lily is going to fall into a pit on her way out of the temple. Uh, wow. The last, Chased the by... Last Werewolves. Clowns. Monkey. Werewolf. Monkeys. Werewolf clowns. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Lily's going to fall into a pit on her way out of the temple while being chased by werewolf clowns. Okay. Um, the golden banana is really trapped with here. poison. Uh, the poison kicks. That's not how you spell poison. I am a little dyslexic. That's fine. Uh, the poison kicks in while Lily runs. is freaking Sprint. out. Uh, freaking out. Uh, yes. Uh, the poison kicks in while Lily is freaking out about being in a tiny pit. Luffy. Fine. No, Buffy finds her. 
because uh. Buffy had heard Lily's screams. Okay, uh, this is all more like the plot line outline. I just have it under conflict right now, uh, which is fine. Now we can start our short story. So our call to action, the reason Lily needs to leave, uh, Lily wants to find the golden banana. Uh, of Minion! Uh, of Minion, of Minion, thank you. All right. Wait, if, uh, is Minion supposed to be like a place? Uh, no. A Minion. Uh, we'll the say... yellow dude, the yellow. Yeah, um... the yellow dude's left behind. Uh, I see a hand up, is that? Uh, Chengsi? Chengsi? Chengsi. Uh, yes, so your hands up? Yeah. Are we going to are we going to um uh to write the story? Yes, we're about to yeah. actually begin. But but the the Zoom has a limit of uh, words. Yes, so I'm lending my narrative voice. That's why we're all using the uh, chat for now. But during our classes, you will be able to write your own versions of your own short stories. Uh, so this is why I'm watching the chat as closely as I can. So that way I can include as many um, ideas and ways to say things as possible. So would you like to give us our introduction, our exposition? No? Yes, maybe? No? OK. How sh uh, she is in Calgary. Uh, OK. Uh, are, are uh, there... uh, 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 hold on, hold on. Our <laughs> exposition. How do we want to start the story? Are we going to say, once upon a time, there once was? Um, I don't think Cal you can be in Calgary and Greenland. Oh, those are two different people. Right, right, right. Um, how shall we begin our short story? There was. Once there was, uh, 200 years ago, Lily had lived in a city her whole life and always wanted to explore. Okay, that is our exposition. We are starting with Catherine's. Lily had, you know, I'll just copy and paste for now and we can change there. Uh, so we actually will get to the fact that Lily is human when we introduce the fact that monkey or Luffy is in fact a monkey. She goes on an adventure to find the golden banana. Yes, Lily had lived her uh, her had lived in a city her whole life. Okay, yeah, that's just and always wanted to explore. Uh, and then let's add a detail here. She went to oh, my keyboard. There we go. Went to university to study archaeology so she could do just that. And we're not going to worry too much about uh, this was a temple with lots of treasure, including the infamous banana minion. OK, uh, she went to university to study archaeology so she could do just that. Excuse me. She had learned of a long lost civilization. Uh, maybe she could be a first person explorer. One more time. Uh, maybe she could be like, maybe in, like when the First Nations came into Canada. OK. Um, I, I'll see if we can work that in. Um, <clears throat> so yes, we do have uh, that going to happen, Angela. Uh, all right, so she had learned of a long lost civilization that uh, was said to be nice. made up of animals that were uh, just like humans. There we go. So now we can introduce this idea. Uh, here is a tongue twister, which which is curse, which will curse you, a witch that you wish. Which witch do you wish? OK. Um, we will get to the rising action in just a moment. Um, just trying to make sure I got all the ideas. Cool. 
All right, um, and we have to introduce the reason why Lily is going to be leaving. So she had learned of a long lost civilization that was said to be made up of animals that were just like humans. Uh, there was a fable that shouldn't have be capital, fabled uh, treasure, the golden yeah. banana of minion. Of minion. Monkeys. We're gonna have the monkeys, it's okay. <laughs> Calm yourself. Uh, the fabled treasure, the golden banana of Minion. Uh, and I uh, will try and be quicker here. There was a fabled treasure. Of, um, of monkey. That was said to be, um, I don't know, what, what's super important? Lily, uh, the born ready explorer was more than ready to find the long lost civilization. Perfect, we can definitely- It's to be a very big adventure. All right, uh, the banana is definitely uh, an adventure. There was a fabled treasure, the golden banana of Minion. What kind of interesting detail are we going to add? Why is this golden banana so interesting to find? Um, it's golden. Because if you sell it, you, it costs one trillion dollars. Okay. The first banana the last, in the world? It's that's, the that's, last banana. Let's type in to contain the first banana you. in the world. The first banana in the world. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, Golden banana of Minion could make her wealthy. Uh, yes, it's golden. Uh, you will live forever. Yeah, let's try and include a live lot of Live forever. Uh, that was said to be the first banana ever, ever. given to human, I mean, ever given to- Monkeys. Actually, Minion. first banana ever given, given to, to us Minion. by the gods. Ah. We're going to add a supernatural element, and it would uh, grant you. you any wish, including immortality. What does that mean? It means you can live forever. I think I've got your ideas in there. All right. Uh, immortality and eternal youth because how awful would that be to be able to live forever but still age um all right now let's get this going lily the born the born ready explorer yes okay we shall include that lily the born ready explorer was more than ready ready we repeat but we'll deal with that later to find the long lost civilization uh and you know what we're gonna give it a name of meme there we go the long lost civilization of meme. It's the only golden banana on earth. Okay, uh, we've already decided that it's gonna be the first banana. Now we have to get to the, uh, the born ready explorer was more than prepared. Yes, very good. Prepared to find the long lost civilization of meme. Okay, now we can get to our rising action. We've got our basics. We're introduced to our character. We know essentially where we are Excuse me. Now, where is this jungle going to be located? Should we go to the Amazon rainforest? Should we go? Yeah, to... Amazon rainforest. Okay, uh, that's a good choice. Yeah, Amazon rainforest. Okay. Um, Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is very interesting, though. Oh, Machu um, Picchu. Yeah. Uh, Let's no. go to Machu Picchu. Okay. No, that's one of the seven wonders at the or world. make one. Make your own beach or um. Okay, like, um, we shall okay. make our own <laughs> long. Monkey island. island. Um, no, the mighty jungle. We. Uh, no, on Mars. On Mars. On Mars. Okay, okay, we're we're gonna move on. I'm gonna create a place. Uh, long lost civilization of uh, Villa. Monkey island. Uh, Villa Cabamba, there we go. What uh, is that? Which, it's a name that I am now creating. It's going to be Perusian or uh, from South America somewhere. There we go. This All right. Every letter. Um, imagine the after she found the banana escape, travel. Yep. Um, Mars, Peru, she came across a metallic forest while exploring. Uh, a medical or did you mean magical? 
Uh, long lost oh. forest of forest. That's funny. Okay. Uh, so now let's get her on the, oh, we got a few minutes left. So let's try and a uh, forest made of precious metals. That's really cool. Uh, so uh, let's skip ahead. Our exposition that gets us started. Let's get us closer to finding the civilization. Uh, Lily was exploring um, we're just going to try and quickly get as much of this out of the way. So it's not going to be a full and complete story, but we'll get most of our events then. Uh, so Lily was exploring a forest when she um, tripped. Filled with monkeys. Uh, tripped, actually. Okay, sure. Uh, when she was pushed down a Hill uh, by a monkey. cliff by a monkey. And she fell into a whirlpool. Filled with monkeys. Um, when she emerged, <laughs> there's a lot of monkeys. <laughs> when she emerged from the whirl, when she emerged from the water, she found. One she million was, monkeys standing by the golden um, banana of Munyand. All right. Where's the third degree murder? <laughs> yeah, uh, it possibly would be. Uh, but this monkey is a monkey. He, he's not, he's, he's like a, not a human monkey or um, an upright monkey, as we'll say. She emerged, uh, when she emerged from the water, she was amazed by the magnificent monkeys. Uh, sight of before monkeys. her. There were. Trees. Monkeys. That much was certain, but they so, were made of of monkeys. What gold. looked like gold. gold and silver and and uh, diamond, monkeys and jewels and monkeys. It was clearly impossible. Lazuko. But there but it there was, uh, was in front of her. And there was monkeys climbing. And there was monkeys. No, replace um, silver with lapis lazuli. All right. Uh, while roaming through the and bones, lots of bones. We'll get to the bones. The They're tree. almost there. Uh, well, roaming through the metallic bite the forest, we, we've got enough monkeys, Kobe. We've got enough <laughs> we monkeys. We need more monkeys. Um, no, we don't need any more monkeys. Lily stumbled upon Pos heaps of no, monkeys. I have a question. You need to yes. change the settings because the setting, the settings is in the hospital. And it, uh, here it's also in the jungle. We're going to get to that. We have to get to that point. Um, so while roaming through the metallic forest, Lily stumbled upon heaps of bones. The bones led her right up to, and you'll see how we'll include the hospital, I promise. Monkeys, monkeys. All right, Kobe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> Deep in. Monkey. And out. Monkey, monkey, monkey. monkey. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, we're, we're very dramatic here. Too many monkeys. Exactly. All right. So the bones led her right up to uh, the ruins of the very temple she had been looking for. Okay. Yes. So we could detail her entire exploration through this uh, temple, but we'll get closer to uh, Lily ending up in the hospital. Um, so before, as she had been caught by millions, if not billions of monkeys. Okay, Catherine, no, 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 come on. Let's, let's stop with this uh, whole monkey thing. We've got enough monkeys and broke her leg. She's definitely gonna fall into the pit. More. Um, so we'll skip ahead to after she's got the golden banana. Um, after she had removed the golden. Oh my. 
golden banana of minion from its pedestal. So there we go. Do we have a title um, for the story? We don't have one yet. What would you like to call it? Um, I don't know. Um, oh, the some the golden banana. All right, who, who's the golden banana of minions? Uh, okay, we can call it. We'll we'll worry about the name later. For now, I just want to try and uh, get to a few of the uh, the tale of too many monkeys, probably uh, from its pedestal. Uh, oh, uh, how are we doing on time here, Lulu? Because I see that we're almost technically done. It's okay, Mr. Ross. It's okay if we can okay. extend the five to ten minutes. That should be fine. All right, guys. Let's see if we can finish this off in about five to ten minutes. Uh, after she had removed the golden banana from its pedestal, uh, she heard massive. What's a pedestal? Rumbling. A pedestal is like a uh, small little. Um, but it's kind of like a stoneish table. It's like a tall nightstand yeah. or a table. Uh, it's very, it's sort of smallish. Like if you think of a side table, usually that you'd put a lamp on top of. Yeah. A pedestal is there to um, like hold something in all its glory to show it off. But uh, sometimes there's like a weight there. You have to. Have yeah. A so, so Lily so may have been a great archeologist but she wasn't a very good Tomb Raider. Uh, she heard what massive is, rumbling. What's and, a Tomb Raider? Uh, so a Tomb Raider, it sounded like monkeys. Enough with the monkeys. <laughs> um, a Tomb Raider is someone that goes to ancient burial sites and that puppet's very distracting. Monkeys, monkeys. Um, okay. Uh, she heard a massive rumbling sound and loud cackling um, howls because we have werewolf monkeys. I mean, werewolf clowns. <laughs> yeah, werewolf oh. monkeys. Werewolf okay. monkeys. Uh, she heard werewolf. massive rumbling and loud cackling howls. Uh, as she was uh, running down through the um, werewolf monkeys, monkeys. temple <laughs> corridor. Uh, that's how you spell that. Okay, she had been caught in the small hole. Yes, we're getting to the small hole. Um, as she was running through the small temple corridor, she was she chased by werewolf saw monkeys. Saw them. Uh, and now let's describe these werewolf clowns. No, um, monkeys. Monkeys. We've had enough monkeys. We've already come to so many of these. We've got to get to the hospital, people. Um, as she was running through the temple corridor, she saw them. These werewolf monkeys. Massive. Werewolf monkeys. Werewolf monkeys. Uh, werewolf monkeys. Werewolves. Um, monkeys. Whoever wanted the monkeys. werewolves. Okay, the werewolf monkeys then. Where uh, monkeys? Kobe, no, no monkeys. not cool. All right, let, let's just calm down. We got to get through uh, the last little bits of this just to get the main ideas down here. The massive colorful <laughs> werewolves that <laughs> rode on small cars. Uh, these <laughs> horrifying <laughs> clowns. <laughs> Chased after Lily until she had fallen into a pit. <laughs> All right. Fallen the pit, pit was Kobe. deep and tiny. Full of Kobe's. Uh, Lily had <laughs> broken her leg and unbeknownst. To her, the golden Kobe. banana of <laughs> minion, minion was also uh, coated in poison. poison. And there we go. Okay, we got most of our details here. The last thing 
Lily. Saul was Kobe. <laughs> Remembered. Was, Kobe. was screaming out for help while the while poison injected. slowly injected. kicked in By and Kobe. she passed out. And died. Um, and then we can explain <laughs> no. as we go along uh, that um, Buffy is going to have heard her, but Lily has to now wake up. Lily awoke in the hospital in what she could only assume was the to be was a hospital. Jungle of the hospital jungle thingy. Uh, and the nervous system is back. In it. Well, she, yeah. Uh, Lily awoke in what she could only assume to be a jungle hospital. A hospital. I don't think we need this comma. Uh, okay, there you go. Uh, Lily awoke in what she could only assume to be was a hospital. When she heard a voice oh. saying, it would seem our human is awake. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, with a monkey and a dog staring right at her. All right, we're going to get to that in just a second. Uh, the curtain of the room she was in slid open to reveal a Bobby. monkey. Monkey and a dog. And a dog. <laughs> Lily was sure she had died or was hallucinating. No, she's in hell. Because, <laughs> oh, because monkeys and dogs Rose do not wear clothes. <laughs> and they are naked. <laughs> do not talk. Or talk. And, and they, are naked. they definitely do not say I am happy to see you alive. Are feeling better. better. Oh no, surprise! <laughs> Curtain slides open. She sees a monkey and a dog. <laughs> One of them says to her, I am happy to see that you're feeling better. Okay. Say she's in hell and. We're, we're not going <laughs> to. No. Um, I'm happy to see you are feeling better. Um, Okay, this so is hell. welcome to hell. <laughs> this is hell, welcome to hell. Okay, so uh, we're not going to quite get to the rest of our short story. It was a lofty goal, but we ended up at least getting most of the climax. Getting, I mean, most of the rising action. We are, there is nothing to do with hell. Okay, <laughs> calm down about that. We've got to uh, change, like, uh, hmm. what if you change like the um, some of the last sentences and Pretend that she couldn't remember what happened because her nervous system probably malfunctioned. Wait, Sorry, what? one more time. So uh, maybe let's just say that uh, Lily probably um, couldn't remember what happened because her nervous system could have uh, malfunctioned. Okay, uh, then she, she lost her brain capacity, paralyzed, or in a coma, or dead. Um, because if your central nervous system is failing, you're not going to be awake to react or see anything. Um, <gasps> and most likely you're not even breathing. You're probably on life support. So uh, we'll deal with that later. Uh, no, there is, uh, who is on my screen and how did you do that? So I didn't give anyone permission. Oh yeah, this. people can annoy, annoy, annoy take. All right, so we're going to stop there for now because we are running out of time. But as you can see, writing a short story is quite an exciting process. There's plenty of things that we can add in. I try to add in as many people's as ideas as possible. Uh, if we had had more time, we probably would have gone into much more detail about the um, animal hospital and the monkey and the dog Buffy. Uh, monkey. monkey Luffy, Dr. Luffy, uh, Nurse <laughs> Buffy, 
and Lily and her poisonous banana. Uh, <laughs> but we were including various parts of expository writing and descriptive writing. We had to explain specific details, factual pieces of information. <laughs> then we had to describe what we saw, what we heard, what she felt. And then we had to narrate that. That's the type of voice that we used. We were in the third person, of course, talking about Lily from the outside in. Um, and yeah, so uh, the last thing I'll quickly show you guys before we end uh, our session. Uh, should you join us? Um, there we go. Yeah. Excuse me. Should you be joining us, uh, you will end up with your own Google document. So what you're going to need is you're going to need an email that I can get. Like I need to be able to have your email that you're going to use to log into the call. So usually I will get your parents' emails, but uh, we need the email that you are going to use to enter your Google document. So that way I can give you your Google document. Usually your name ends up here, the subject that we're doing, and then your grade level. One, so that way, if I know your grade level, then I know how much to expect and what to give you and how tough to go. Uh, but you'll get your three main sections, a chalkboard, which is where I post all of the information that, uh, there was a message, where did it go? Um, Colby, see you this evening. You can share it with somebody like, um, you know yeah, I'll be. I need a um email username. Uh, I know my email, but I don't know yours. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I know someone just sent me a chat, but I can't access the chat right now. It seems. Where did it go? There it is. Ah, it's hiding behind this window. Um, yes. Oh no, no, I don't need your emails right now. You're gonna give your emails uh, to Michael and Lulu, and then they are going to be giving me the emails so that way I can share your documents. You'll end up with I a mean, chalkboard. I'm supposed to give you the, you the email, like our email. No, not right now. No, 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 no. I don't need you uh, to give me your emails. Uh, once you uh, register this class. Yes, once you have registered. <laughs> I will collect the emails from parents. Yes, all right. So uh, the last note that I wanna give you all is just to show you how we would be doing our classes. So you would all make sure that you can watch your emails. That's the most important thing is to be able to use your email. Uh, you'll have your chalkboard. This is where I will put information, things that you need to know for the class. If there's anything we need to know, I put examples, stuff we do together. Your workspace is where you would be doing any work that we do in class, any writing uh, of all that sort. And then homework space is where all the homework will appear. It will be assigned and then you do all your homework on the document. And of course, if I give you links to websites that you're gonna to need to use for material, that goes here in the external link section. And then comments are gonna be dated. So let's say you did work on Wednesday, December 23rd. Uh, yes, Sophie. Um, if like, um, do we use our work email or like, um, like if, if we register class, do we use our work email or? Uh, you use the email that uh, whatever email will let you access the Google call that we'll use, the meet, and then the document. So don't worry so much about that because you're going to be giving uh, Lulu all your information when you register. Um, so don't worry too much about that, yeah, but I'll give sure Lulu instructions. This, yeah, only make sure this email is not your school, school Gmail. Like your school yeah. oh, oh, okay. A personal email, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I if you need to create one. a new Google email, that's completely fine. It's easier just to have, um, always include your name as well, but I'll leave uh, Lulu some instructions. So the last thing I was gonna say for comments, uh, and I'll teach you all how to use Google Docs if you don't know how to use it already. Um, thank you. Uh, you will have, uh, like, let's say you did work on um, Wednesday, December 23rd, there will be a comment section, thank you, um, and I will leave comments, like I'll leave number one, here is an example comment, and that will relate to anything that you did 
on this particular date. Let's say you did homework on another date or uh, it's under the heading of another date, then the comments that are left for this date don't have anything to do with that one, but you'll see specifically. Other than that, that's all I can think of. Um, we may even finish the short story in within our first class, um, probably with less monkeys. Uh, but other than that, does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns for me, things that they want to ask to know about? This is fun. How much? No, is fun? no, no. Okay, Sophie is done with the monkeys. I think we need more monkeys. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, no more Tiffany. monkeys. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. All Mr. right. Ross, for My pleasure. Wonderful. Cut. Or the